Hello everybody and welcome to another wee video. This video on the ramp today is Wee Mazda 2. I think it's 2011 model year. Customer complaint is a knocking noise from the back. So uh, you're driving along, go over speed ramps quite vigorously. It's quite a big thump coming out of the back. But when I took it for a wee test drive, I found that it was quite bouncy at the back. So we'll have a wee quick visual underneath, underneath the car there. And we can see that shock absorber as uh, Leaked all the oil out of it there, so we can see the seat at the bottom of that is uh, completely soaking wet. If we compare that over to the other one there, it's uh, nice and dry there. However, uh, unfortunately, I had to text the owner there, we've got a bad news. We discovered this is more than likely the noggin problem that she's hearing. We are going to run this car is we have a busted spring the old busted spring which i do all the time uh, on all sorts of cars it's not just uh not just easy small cars so a busted spring up in there so we we'll maybe be able to hook that wee bit out there maybe if it's going to come out for us So there we go. Yeah. So there we go. There's our that last wee turn. Usually break. Usually break at the bottom. Uh, springs, especially that wee pigtail there. You see where it all all starts to rust at the bottom. Uh, so I would have broken there probably at some stage anyway. That's where they usually break. Don't normally break at the top, but nevertheless, uh, this one here. I don't know where it'll come out. There's not an awful lot holding that spring in there at the minute. So, yeah, get a bit of light on that side of it there, perhaps. So, there's the brake there. And it's just that last wee bit, that last wee sort of corner, if you will, that's holding that spring in, in place. That spring is trying to make a bid for freedom so you can see that it's not seated at all and when i give that a, a big a bit of a wiggle i'll be able to pop that out which, which i don't want to do but uh okay so we'll do these two shock absorbers um i insist on with all the customers that uh we change the two shocks in pairs and the thinking behind that, the logic behind that is that that shock wear will be an awful lot weaker than the new one. So if we just change this one shock, which would uh, probably pass MOT okay and stuff, but uh, if we just change this one shock, you're sort of back in the same scenario. Only So you've got a strong shock on one side and a weak shock on the other one. So whenever we get that out, we'll be able to compare and see uh, the strengths of them by pushing on them. So we'll see if that logic holds up. But uh, yeah, do them in pairs. Should really do the springs in pairs. I'll recommend that too. However, uh, a lot of people, they just want the broken one uh, sorted. Uh, that one over there will break at some stage because it's rusting at the bottom and it's rusting in the same position at the top. So yeah, that'll snap as well on her. And, uh, it's just that last wee turn is holding that in the in the boot there, in the in the mount. So, yeah, we'll get this. Uh, we'll get these uh, wheels off, and uh, we'll we'll do these shocks, and maybe give you a few wee hints and tips if you're going to do something like this yourself. This is quite doable. Uh, this this style here, uh, quite accessible, so uh, anybody can do this. So, we'll just take you through a few wee a few wee tips on on what to do. Okay. Okay, with the car back on the ground again, and uh, the reason why I did that, I'm in the habit of uh, whenever the car has the security wheel nut lockers on it, uh, you take these off by hand, so you don't put an impact anywhere near these. These are a curse of a thing. Now, that's the uh, style. This is a, a McGard, M-C-G-A-R-D, McGard style wheel nut locker, and if you if somebody or you, you you are using impacts in this 
that center bit will just snap off and remain inside that uh, the female side there. So with the car, with the wheels back on the ground again, I'm simply going to uh, going to take these off by hand with a breaker bar. So it wasn't too bad that one. Tight enough nose. So yeah. So loose nose by hand with the wheel still on it. They're just cracked, so uh, when we get her back up in the air again, we'll just zip them off then with a with a gun. Okay. So here we are, ready to uh, take this uh, lower bolt out of this shock absorber. So uh, we we'll have the tension of the spring counteracted with a uh, jack, and I have a high high lift jack there, but you could do this with any jack. We drop off uh, lubrication there. And we're gonna give this a rattle with our we are tool here that uh, I've demonstrated in another video. If you check the other videos out, so we'll give this a go. So we're just uh, forward and reversing it. Tighten off that. So we're just forward and reversing it a few times so as not to run the risk of snapping anything, snapping this bolt or putting any stress in this. This is captured here, uh, so there's a couple of tags of weld here, so don't want to stress that or break that, so that's why we're doing this forward and reverse, and with this wee, wee gun, it's dead easy to do that. So there we go, that's that nice and free. So if you didn't have the jack here, that spring would be sitting on the bolt. So that would be pushing down on it. So the jack is, is making that nice and free for us. So that's that wee bit. Okay, here we are at the top of the shock absorber. It's a couple of 12 mil bolts, pretty accessible. So I can get a gun in here. I'm gonna use cordless on it. Turn it up a wee bit. It's starting to go. shock we'll just drop out right so here's a shock out of the car and what I'm gonna do probably don't have to do this but I'm gonna do it anyway is I'm gonna put a wee dab of marker paint on the front there so just in case it's not symmetrical I think it is but I'm just gonna do that anyway so another wee thing that I noted there I don't know our camera will pick it up it says uh, FOMOCO Ford Motor Company on on this rubber here if it's going to come up on the camera so uh, yeah so this wee Mazda is basically a Ford Fiesta um, so a lot of Ford parts on it so uh, parts for the parts of this wee car are readily readily available so we're just going to buzz this wee 10mm knock off it here so that's that and uh, we'll then be able to 
pull less pull less top off. There we go. Look at this. Gee, it's not gonna stay on it. That's a bit of corrosion in there, it must be a wee water champ. And so it's not leaking, uh, but a thing that I like to do is I like to see the strength of this thing. So yeah, it's not too bad. It's pretty stiff, but we'll just compare that to the new one. This is the reasonably good one. It's not leaking, as we can see. Uh, it's quite crusty there at the top, but as I say, we're gonna replace them in, in pairs. So we'll just get the new one out and uh, make sure it's the same. Right, so here's the shock absorber we're going to use for this. This is this, uh, it's an aftermarket make, uh, Nordschleifer. Uh, so it's a very German sounding name there for this, uh, this type of shock absorber. Quite cheap these, these are aftermarket, uh, fairly cheap uh, shock absorbers, but as we can see in the box, uh, made in China. However, uh, a German sound name, but it's made in China. But I've fitted a few of these. They're not bad, and they're about half the price of a KYB, or a, or a third of the price of a, of a Sax, or a Monroe. So for a wee car, anyway, uh, I give the customer the choice. They can certainly go for a KYB, or one of the branded makes, and uh, let me get that off. So we get that strap off. There's a new nut that comes with it there, and then you compare it to just compare it to our our old one there. So yeah, looks pretty much the same. That there's a bit bigger looking. It's actually, it's actually uh, there's more girth to it there. Yeah, bushing's the same. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite uh, quite quite bigger in construction. But <laughs> that'll do the job. I reckon. So we'll just put our put our boot back on again. And we'll have the new nut to go on the top. On the top there, and okay. So these new nuts, they have a wee, there is a wee locking device in, in them. They're not a nylon lock nut but there's a couple of wee serrations at the top of them. So you won't be able to spin it down. So there is a, a locker on it there. So we need to hold this wee flat bit. I'm just gonna do it with ice grips here. And we'll be able to run that down. So it's difficult to get an idea of the torque of this wee nut. This one here is a 12 mil. The one off the original was a, a, a 10 millimeter head size but uh you don't need to be too tight with this because you can't actually snap that and i have done that before by being a wee bit over exuberant with this right so we'll just get that's fine so you get to know the feel of the way it's a torx with experience, but uh, yeah, you don't need to go too tight with that. Uh, there is a wee locker on it. So the last thing we need to do, this is very important, guys. I'm going to show you a wee thing. Just change the camera angle. Okay, what you need to do with any new shot absorber, because it's been laying flat in storage, uh, all the oil will be on one side of it. So in order to get the oil moving about, you need to give it a number of pumps. 
open. So you can actually feel it getting stiffer as you do that, as you bring the oil up to it. So it just needs three or four on it. Do four compressions and that's it ready to put in. Right, so we're ready to put our shock in here at night. So our e paint mark from before, we know what way it's gonna go. We know that's correct. So slide around the bottom there, just doing that off camera. And the next thing is, now guys, you need to watch you get this lined up here because you can cross the red bead. Uh, so that's why you put them in by hand. No impact tools here, you can just bring these and it's a captured nut into the red arch, so you don't want to do that. And make sure it goes up in nice and straight. Bring it up nice and evenly. Okay, so regarding torque on this, again, I don't know what the setting is. I'm just putting a slightly longer ratchet on for a bit. Yeah, that's more about there. That's daily on. Okay, doke. Right. That's more or less it. Just the bottom bolt to go in. Okay, here we are again at the bottom of the shock. So. There's just a couple of wee things to note here. Uh, this bolt has a, a bevel ended on it, so it should be self centering in that captured nut. Okay, so we're just going to thread her in and make sure she starts on a couple of threads. Might need a wee bit of a lift up there, just take the weight off it. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. And we're going to do all this by hand here. Just for the moment. So, so it's fitting nicely. So, the reason why I'm showing you a sweet bit is I'm not going to tighten this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this in and it's going to remain slightly loose for this point in time and the only reason why I'm putting this bolt in really is to take this jack out and move it to the other side so that's it snug that's it sort of snug there so I'm going to back it off about half a turn so the reason why I'm doing that guys is whenever we get the wheels back on again and we put the car under its own weight so that's going to go that's going to go up and that's going to turn slightly on that bolt there and then you tighten that up so anything any arms or anything like that that you put in that has rubber bushings in it you want to you want to tighten them with with the weight on the car you don't want to tighten it at this point because if you tighten it at this point and then you drop it down there's always going to be strain on that rubber bush even even when it's just sitting uh when it's just sitting so whenever the the shock goes up even more when you go over a bump it's going to try and pull that bush, pull that bush, and uh, you'll, you'll seriously uh, shorten the life of that that bush in there. 
So it's just that wee simple tip there. I don't know why everybody does that. It's dead easy just to run that up with a gun and rattle it up and that's it and call it a, call it a day. But uh, I like to, to know that I've done the thing uh, correctly. So just another wee tip. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to lower this jack. We're going to take this jack down, move it, move it over to the other side. This is now going to take the weight off this spring because there's a bolt in it, albeit it's not fully tightened. And we're going to move the other side, take the other shock out and remove that, uh, that broken spring. So that's the next stage of operation. Okay, here we are on the right hand side of the car. So we've got that shock absorber, pull that out, uh, just like the way we did the other side. And there's that broken spring and you can see how far uh, out of position it is. It's out of the seat there by a fair bit. So yeah. There wasn't much holding that. If that had a broke about here, that spring would have popped out. So, yeah. So we're just going to pull this spring out with that shock out. We've got the jack uh, underneath this side of the axle, moved across from the left hand side. So, we'll just show you how we're going to do this. The exhaust sensor is in the way on this side, so that's why we have, we nearly have to do this with the shock absorber out. So we're going to put this bio here in the position and uh, screw it up there so we're going to screw it from from below and make sure that it's caught in and it doesn't look too bad at all and we'll see if we can get an impact on the bit on the bottom of it here should be able to Hopefully. So that's compressed. And we'll have to pick over the ground. There's our spring out and on the ground, so we'll just uh, very e easily and gingerly release this. So there we go. One spring. So. I think that's it for this one. This is a, a wrap. I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, installation is a reversal of the removal, as they say. So, yeah. So, we'll get a couple of springs. I haven't got uh, the springs. I uh, just discovered that spring is broken. So, hopefully, we'll get one in the morning. Uh, might actually recommend changing the other one because it is rusty in the same position where that one there has broken. So, but because the exhaust isn't there on the left hand side we'll be able to uh just offer that wee tool up there and and pop it out so the whole uh the whole trick of this job here is do one side first don't take don't take one side apart and then, and then take the other side apart because the axle will just fall on you so you use the shock absorbers to, to hold the axle up on each side and uh, each side you you support it with a jack as well so that i think that's the whole trick in this and again uh, you tighten those shock absorber bolts up with the weight on the weight is on the, on the, on the bolt on the on the bolts. So that's it for this one. That wraps. That's a wrap for this video. And uh, many thanks for watching as ever. Many thanks for all the positive comments, all the good comments. Really, really nice uh, interaction going on with the videos. And thanks for watching again. All the best. And bye bye.